so I'm slightly brain fried starting the stream almost half an hour late without a full dinner. <laughs> I'm so sorry if I'm a little bit scattered today, but that is how it goes sometimes. I'm doing all right. Um, welcome to speak out in two, two Tuesday, two, two Tuesday to Tuesday. Mm, words. Um, I might eat while I stream. I'm waiting for it to cool down some. Um, so just to like let everybody know the like, good news, not in bad news or anything like that. We are, we have potentially started another stream because five streams in a week sounds like a great idea, doesn't it? Um, no, so yesterday we tried out because I've been having a hard time focusing on what projects, creative projects I'm supposed to do and I get really overwhelmed. So I was like, what if we do creative sprints on Monday mornings where I spent the first like sprint or two figuring out what I'm doing for the week, make my plans. Like I'm gonna spend some amount of time doing music and I'm gonna spend some time doing art or some amount of time writing. These are the projects I'm working on this week. Got it. Um, which actually helps me not feel like I'm flailing around and overwhelmed. Um, and it went really well. And then we did creative sprints for the rest of the, like a couple of hours. So I might be doing that on Mondays from now on. So if you want to start off your Monday morning being a productive human or non-human, I don't judge. Um, swing on by. Uh, it's 11 a.m. Eastern time, which might actually be a convenient time for those of you who are in European time zones or even farther away. Um, so maybe we'll see some of you there. Um, I'm going to leave this intro thing for YouTube to watch. So if you are a YouTube person who's always wanted to come to my streams and you can't make it other times, maybe you can make it this time. Um, otherwise, yeah, like tonight is Suikoden. Tomorrow is Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood. Thursday is um, Hades, and I'm about to, to drop um, a mini golf idea. So so if you like my mini golf moments, like look forward to that. <laughs> and then Saturday I decided we're gonna do art. It might be mermaids. It might be finally finishing that picture of tough stuff, or it might be like cover art for my fanfics. So who knows, but at least I've decided what it is that we're doing on that day. Um, so, oh, I didn't, I was gonna, I was gonna switch to the stick on this and I didn't, I didn't remember that last time. Yeah, well, Chrono, you know, sometimes you gotta have a little inside joke vocabulary. Inside jocabulary? <sighs> yep. <laughs> we can just have a little like translation guide of all of the little jargonisms that that happen. I don't know besides mini golfs what we would have, but if you have if you have suggestions, put them in the suggestion box. Look at this. We have suggestion box. No, I haven't activated my time warpiness. Am I going to be missing out on? Another thing that I need to have time, time, timing, time, 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 Clive. Uh, okay, so. You know, I think that putting a thank you in the suggestion box is a completely reasonable thing. Also, the. Everybody takes suggestion box as like a loose guideline. <laughs> I don't think most people in in our headquarters actually use it for suggestions. It's just a letter box. Um, all right, so Apple, you really ought to thank Richmond for that one, Apple. Also Apple, like we all benefited for that, but that's fine. All right, Hicks is telling us he doesn't think, which as Chrono says, we, we know that's true. Oh, Hicks. What do you think? Do you think that, uh, that Hicks is cut out to be a warrior? I feel like if he doesn't want to be one, he shouldn't have to be one. And of course, then we run into 
like a lot of difficulties with a. Uh, it's part of the problem with strict gender roles. Like saying that everybody who falls into one perceived category has to have certain attributes and, and, and participate in certain activities. Like, you know, maybe for a fair number of people, um, in that culture, like, it works out okay, but there's always going to pe be people it doesn't work for. Um, and I really think that if you're going to have compassion in the setting that you have, like, in your, in your culture, you need to, you need to have accommodations for people who do not fit into your boxes. But, but, they didn't ask me, so they probably won't listen to me. Um, hi Usagi, welcome. I like Kirby. I haven't played Kirby games much, but I like him as a character. So I think that Hicks is capable when when it comes down to it, but he's really hesitant. And and the question that we're yes, we are going to read too much into Hicks's question. Welcome to Lauren's stream. <laughs> um, no, so. It seems that Hicks is not completely incompetent. I mean, part of that is because we gave him a really good rune in the first game around, so he got to defeat Necklord himself. Um, but it's hard to tell, like, is Hicks... Oh man, there's no easy mode. We've done some of the cooking contests. Yeah, that's actually why I did a, I did a cooking stream a couple of weeks ago, inspired by having done through that. I love it. Um, uh, it's beginning to pick up in drama, but we haven't gotten to like the full levels of drama yet So look forward to that. We'll probably do more of those today. My guess is that there'll be other ones that I've unlocked um, But yeah, so so Hicks clearly has a lot of like insecurity um, and anxiety and So like the question is, you know, when he says he's not cut out to be a warrior Does what he really mean is, is what he really means? I don't want to be a warrior and so I can't bring myself to do it because it doesn't feel right? Or is it like, I don't think I'm good enough to be a warrior? Um, because that's a very different situation. Like, one is like, you shouldn't have to be something you don't want to be and it sucks if your culture makes it so that you have to be. Um, and the other is like, we can work on self-esteem, friend. We can work on self-esteem. So, so yeah, I don't know, Hicks. I don't know. That's that's my excessive quantities of overanalyzing <laughs> in response to his letter. Yeah. I feel like he's writing to, like, Dear Prudence, Dear Abby, you know? Did you know that those are called Agony Ants? Isn't that the greatest name? I love it. Like, I love the term Agony Ant. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> I mean... But see, Art Lum, the question is not... What I'm saying is not like, is he capable or not capable? But does he want to be or not? Because he can fight, but he hesitates to take action as a warrior. And I think that that's... Uh, I think that's the question. Because like really, if you don't want to and can't bring yourself to do it because you don't want to do it, then in a way you are incapable of it. And that's okay. Um, so yeah, these are these are the questions. These are the questions. Hicks, we don't know. Okay, all right, which one of our older people do we think is gonna be grumping? Is this gonna be Granny? Or is this gonna be somebody else? Granny doesn't seem like she would grump, but I don't know who else is in our Granny category here. Uh, oh, it's the bathhouse guy. <laughs> Only taking a bath once a day. Mm. All right, Tetsu, we'll get on that. <laughs> oh, man. Well, that was good. Let's go see what Richmond has to say to us today. So if you'll recall, last time we finished Futch and Humphrey's side story, um, which is very satisfying, and I cried a little bit even though I knew it was coming. I still, I'm sorry, I'll have to get it for next week. Unless I, I might be flying home to Texas in a few weeks, in which case I will take a photo of the painting that I did for my sister of 
footage and black and bright. Um, but I'll try to get um, I'll try to get that photo of that of that painting for you guys. Um, but uh, after that, overall quite heartwarming um, and, and well characterized section, um, which I really like. Said I think that they did a fantastic job with Footch. Um, and I hope even people who found him annoying in the first game like what they did with him in this game. Um, but, uh, um, then we continued hanging out with Mikletov, connected with him, on the way to Muse. And all of us who knew it was coming kept a brilliant poker face. I'm so proud of all of you, and you should be proud of me too, as we wander into Muse. And no spoilers for the people who haven't seen the rest of the game. <laughs> but the people who'd never seen the rest of the game were like, um, what just happened? And all the characters are like, what just happened? That's clearly not a good time. And so now we're dealing with the ramifications, or we're going to deal with the ramifications of that, which was, yes, Chrono and Noel Girl. And I think there are a couple of others, maybe, who haven't seen it. Um, I love Camus and Mikkeltov, too. Mostly Mikkeltov. Okay, I have literally no idea what this means. What does Wafu mean? Dude, does anyone know? Is this a mystery? Is this a translation thing? Is this like a location that we haven't seen that maybe is like a hint at where and when Vicky originates from? Or she could just be wanting food. Who knows? Okay, so if nobody knows, then I'm gonna go ahead and go out on the limb here and say that it's possible that this is either a character or a location from her backstory. Or it could be Anamatopia. But I want to know more <laughs> than we got. I'm still hoping that when Aiden comes out, there'll be like little Easter eggs to give some closure. <laughs> All right, who should we investigate next, folks? Oh, is it just sleeping Anamatopia? Hmm, that's less interesting. We want to. We do. We want to. Do we want to investigate Nanami? Let's do that. Why not? All right, big sister, we're gonna pry into your business. We're not reading her diary, so technically it's okay. <laughs> this kid is so hyper. Wait, is Wafu something actually from later in the series? Because I've, I've played all of them except for Tactics and there was a card stories game that I didn't play. Are there any other ones that I didn't play? I read the scripts to Gaiden many years ago, so I don't remember them super well, but I haven't played through them. thought about playing them on stream. It's a lot of text because it's a visual novel, but that hasn't stopped us before. That's what I was thinking is Wafu is her place of origin. That's what I was I was I was I was guessing here that it might be. Um Which would be awesome. But I don't know, I mean, I bet that either Suiko Stars or Suiko X asserts that that is a known fact when it's not. Alright. Yeah, I was gonna go in there. You know what we're gonna do? I just save stated because I can. Let's go and have a battle. Yes. I might get my dinner. Do you do you don't mind if I eat dinner on stream? So here Hayo has a friend. But he's being ominous. Hayo is concerned. Now, if you'll recall, oh yes, a lot of them, a lot of them have 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 killed themselves upon losing. All right, I had a pot pie from a local bakery, so I'm gonna get that. Okay, I'll be right back. I have to say hi to Sophie. 
I'm up too. Thank you, Asagi. All right. Yeah, I really like pot pies. If I cook, I make a uh, biscuit pot pie, which is something I've cooked on stream before, and it's something that we can cook on stream again. It's one of my favorites to, to cook. Um, but see, like, you can tell, like, <clears throat> the top of it isn't fully... The top of it isn't fully, like, it's it's not cooked quite right. But, and the pastry here is, like, kind of coming apart. But, you know what? I'm going to eat it. Because it's not like it's, a. Uh, it's not like it's dangerously undercooked or anything like that. Oh, I should probably get a, I should probably get a napkin. So I, when I eat pot pie, it's kind of messy. So I'm just going to. There's a, there's a cafe just down the road from me that is owned by a bakery. So they have tr uh, treats from the bakery, including some savory treats. Mm. There are, um, we have ones that are like beef that are clearly like cooked with some like wine in there and they're really good. My mushroom ones, which are really good. And this is the chicken one. And then of course you gotta have a good stew inside. They seem to use regular, just like frozen veggies in there, which is not. Not the, not the way I do it necessarily. Although it works. <clears throat> but it's tasty. I can have a cook off with you. And Hayo is like, oh, something's not right here. So here we're beginning to get some hints as to what is going on. They did say, like, return the thing you've stolen. You know, I didn't grow up with rhubarb. And I don't know that I like rhubarb. But I don't know that I don't like rhubarb. I haven't yet been able to develop a strong opinion on it. So we did just save. We would just have to redo Richmond. Although I did a I did a save state, so. or the taste preferences of these. So I have a sweet tooth. I'm not necessarily super into bitter things. So I don't think I liked rhubarb especially much, but I think I might need to develop a taste of it. Give me some hints. Okay, Shilo likes Japanese food. Got it.
This is not very helpful information. <clears throat> I do have cake. I got the cake recipe. You know, Chrono, maybe they're girlfriends. <clears throat> you never know. Woo, hi yo! If this were Iron Chef, he would arise from the floor on a rotating platform, holding his item very seriously. All right. <clears throat> So we need to make an appetizer that's actually an appetizer, which is something I struggle with guessing. I, we, 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 uh, somebody, somebody sent me a link to watch Itoi as, as a guest on it, which is super cool. Hmm. Does Gyoza count as an appetizer? Because I'm used to thinking of it as an appetizer. But that just might be my Americanness. Yes, Sakai was my my favorite as well. Good choice. Yeah, we're gonna do a watch along of Iron Chef at some point. Apparently, since it's on YouTube, I could even stream it. We could watch it as long as we don't archive it. No, Iron Chef is not quite like anything else. Hmm. main course should we make? Okonomiyaki? I don't know what that is. No. Absolutely not. Meat bun is a good choice. Oh, which one should we? Should we make just the plain barbecue meat bun or should we make a different version? Hmm. <clears throat> I mean, ginger beef bun sounds delicious. I would eat that. I would definitely eat that. I love ginger so much. Ginger is one of my favorites. And let's make cake. Which cake? Short cake. It's delicious. The Nami cake? Mm, maybe not. Black cake? That doesn't sound very good. Cheesecake? <clears throat> Fire cake? No raw tomatoes. Not allowed. These are so good. I go like every couple of weeks and just see what they've got in their freezer. This is a meal I would really love. Gyoza. Ginger beef is good, so I assume that a ginger beef bun would be good. And cheesecake. Fantastic. Alright, let's do it.
We did it. We did it faster than I think we've ever done it before. <clears throat> All right. Hey, Dover, thank you for the raid. Come on in. I'm eating while we do this. Hmm. Island salad. Like, what is that? Is that like a Hawaiian salad of some sort? Apparently it's pretty all right. <clears throat> you better like make views of people. I'll be very sad if you don't, but I'll forgive you. Disapproval. Oh no, I'm gonna get destroyed by this. Fried rice. Oh wow. Ulan loves this. Okay, good to know. Oh, gear that doesn't count as an appetizer. That's what I was concerned about. No, I keep doing that. <clears throat> Maybe the cake will save us. We'll see. Ulan does not like cheesecake. <clears throat> How dare. We did not do it. Oh, what? Wow. Well. Can't argue with that. We won! Exciting. I consumed my dinner. It was tasty. Raw tomato does count as a dessert? Seriously? Think of that as a salad, not a dessert. How strange. I mean, that might be a cultural thing, so I really shouldn't call it strange, but just for me, picturing eating a tomato for a dessert. I mean, I like tomato. A good tomato? Like, cut, slice of tomato, put it on a high quality bagel, a little bit of mayo, a little bit of salt. Delicious. Man, I can't get New York style bagels up here. I can only get Montreal style bagels. They are not the same at all. It's very frustrating. So I'll have to make my own. But that requires like effort. So here, Hayo is, um, is upset that his friend is working for the group. Oh, here we have a sympathetic reason why. The drama intensifies. <clears throat> yeah, whereas um, my family are New York Jews, so I have a bias too. <laughs> the woman from before. Somebody who Hayo knows from his mysterious past. One of the four lords of the Black Dragon group. The plot thickens.
<clears throat> Very dramatic. And you're like, oh, it's just gonna be a cooking mini game. Oh, great, this is gonna be fun. No, there's melodrama. I appreciate, by the way, how chat is, is talking about things, the plot thickening, like various food items that thicken. What about pudding? <laughs> Custard. Okay, so Ellie, when we say things that are originally French, but have worked their way into English, we will not put the accents right. <laughs> well, I was trying to type something in French, because um, I've been doing ring fit, I've been, I, and I set the, the voice to French, so the text is still in English, but it's, 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 it's yelling at me in French, and I'm like, oh, I think I know what that means. Um, then I was trying to type some of it on my phone and I'm like, I do not have the characters I need to do this well. You just have to know what I'm trying to say. Oh, okay. Yeah, spelling is hard. <laughs> and spelling in multiple languages is harder. Huh. Anyway, Bashok is is friendly. Oh, I know some alt codes. I know how to do the E accents. Oh man, we got the fried rice recipe. Yes, the the vowels in in French are very difficult. I'm gonna try learning German. Our uh, our friend Sertaki on the Discord has convinced me to give it a try, to try to learn languages rather than classes and stuff which never work for me. Oh, Sophie wants in. I'm gonna read a book that I like with a dictionary. Sophie, come on in, baby. Come on in, baby girl. Do you wanna say hi? No, you don't wanna say hi. Can I say hi? She's like, no, I just wanna drink water. Oh, baby. Look at this baby. It's Sophie. Sophie, 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 Sophie. Sophie, 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 Sophie. Hello. Okay, I'll let you down now. <laughs> I feel bad. I haven't been able to give her as much attention as she wants. But. Yeah, well, I mean, you can look up the alt codes too. I think it's alt 0233 is one of the E's with an accent. I think oh, 0174, I think, is registered trademark symbol. I'm a copywriter, <laughs> so I've needed these. Yes, that. That's the one. <clears throat> Busted again. Meg, what did you do? Oh, she's not in trouble, Busted. Something broke. When Busted as a you're in trouble? When did that come? Titan has thingamajig. I'm sure that's a technical term for it, Meg. So interestingly, because my keyboard is... Because I bought my laptop in Canada, which is a bilingual country, all of the, like... All of the, like, keys with words on them have them in both English and French. It's very exciting. It makes me feel like I have, like, a super cool laptop because that's never happened before. But it doesn't seem to have anything special to get those. That's the one! That's the one that's the hardest. I don't remember what it's called. But the C with the... I should know what that is. 
John Madden? Are you naming that? Are you naming that character John Madden? No, save properly, Lauren. Save on the button that does the save. Okay, we're good. Oh, I don't know memes. I'm way too uncool for memes. So, but is that what? What a CD? Is that how you say that word? Every time I force myself to say a word that's not in English in public, it's a little victory. It's very, very hard for me. Do you hear that? That's my cat. Position Royal Guard. I think they mean that she's your bodyguard because <laughs> she's your sister. <laughs> Alright, let's keep going. Nanami, all of your secrets are going to be ours. She's going to love that. It does feel kind of rude <laughs> since it's her sister. Richmond is great. Yes, that is a word with very many vowels. Oh man, so <clears throat> there's certain certain words that you encounter a lot when you're like studying the language in school. Like they just have like themes for <clears throat> for uh vocabulary lists and I got really excited trying to trying to come up with a really absurd sentence that had um, cake hat horse hair castle because I was like all of these words have similar final syllables so I will stack as many of them as I can into a sentence and my teacher was like Oh my god, Lauren, why are you doing this? And gift. That's another one. <laughs> because when you know very few words in a language, you start seeing the words as being similar, even when they're not. So, just imagine me trying to like stack those together like I'm building a house out of blocks. Uh, let's do plot. Yes, we're gonna go ahead and progress the story with a little bit of lightheartedness. Now let's go delve into what just happened in news. In the room. This is where I want to live. No, they are not just sitting idly by. I'm going to talk about Muse. Maybe we don't. The Nami is not the hugest fan of fighting. It's a nighttime. Haven't seen anything suspicious. All right, all is well. Thanks, Ridley. You can count on him. All right, let's go down the stairs. See what we can do here. Yes, I am. I'm talking to everybody. Everyone's like, it's all good. Everything's great. Sophie is on a tear. Hello, Ulan. She's like, everyone else has gone to bed and she's like, whatever. I'm having a good time here. <laughs> oh, Vicky. Vicky is snoozing. Oh my god, I quote that constantly, Noel girl. Alright, we'll see you in a bit, Silk Alive doll. Hi, Luke. 
Everybody's favorite. What a charmer. Look at this. We have this entire... Look at this. Look at how well we're doing. Such a good job. Man. And then this one's mostly full. This one's not. But we're doing pretty well. We have, I think, more than half the stars now. Yeah. We're doing pretty all right here. Oh, poor Vicky. I would believe it. So wander around, talk to everybody we can get to. Barbara is up and working hard. Ah, okay. No one enters or leaves here after nightfall, huh? Hmm. I suppose that's for security's sake. Oh, hello, boys! No, Victor, you are not a responsible parent. I think we talked about this last time. Flick is brooding. Victor is being an irresponsible father, you know. So here we got a bunch of adults enjoying adult beverages. Anita's meanwhile brooding about her ex-girlfriend. It's okay, she's with Ulan now. It's a trade-up. Oh, I could put people in my party. I won't though. Not now. Okay. Yes, we have a new we have a new head cannon. Okay. They really Oh no. <laughs> I love that our guard here is drunk. <clears throat> that is not a good way for a guard to be. Oh look. Everybody is not here. Sophie, that's your kitty litter, not your food. She wants, she had dinner, but she wants more. <laughs> she hungers. Hi, Will, welcome. Hello. We are getting into trouble trying not to go to bed in this game. Yeah, no, it is a really nice touch that like there's, there's an individual line of dialogue for every single guard. I like the fact that you can, um, like you can wander around a bit, talk to people a bit, be like, oh, this is what it's like. The adults are drinking. Some people like Barbara are working hard. Hello. Get some rest. Hello there. Shu has a low to the ground, I guess, a Japanese style table, I think. Yeah, he's definitely not sitting up in a big desk and chair. All right, and here's what we're supposed to have been doing all along. Felika has feelings. So many feelings. So Nanami is sad and Palika is sad and Nanami is failing at communicating because, I mean, she's Nanami. Communicating is hard. Oh, yes! <laughs> Sophie, what do you think you're doing, kitten? Sophie, that's your kitty litter bag. It's where the litter is, not where the food is. All right, so there's Joey and Luca. Nothing ominous here at all. So here is Joey giving strategic advice to Luca Blight after proving himself to be a good strategist and a reliable person. How did you get so wise? So hey, <clears throat> do you remember Leon Silverberg? <laughs> do we need a refresher as to who Leon Silverberg is? 
Leon Silverberg was in the first game. He's single-handedly responsible for a lot of people not getting the best ending because there's a very narrow window of opportunity to recruit him and he's a little out of the way. So, Leon, if you'll recall, yes, the Kaleka incident, <laughs> that is correct. Leon is the one who decided that the ends justified the means, slaughtered his own, his, his country's own village to uh, inspire their army to win the war. Which is a certain degree of ruthness, ruthlessness that we've seen in other characters. Um, like Joey, that's something that is not completely out of line with what Joey's been doing. Joey's actions aren't quite like that. Um, but that line of thinking of um, if these people die, it will save more lives. So let's make that decision. Um, yes, Humphrey quit over this guy. Um, Matthew quit over this guy. Um, oh yes, please do share share photos of your delicious food. Well, um, yeah. So Leon, Leon. I mean, he succeeded in doing what he did. He just then lost key members of, of, of the military who were appalled beyond words at what he had done. Okay, so this is in case you need a refresher because you don't obsess over the Suikoden games because this is the second one has just come out and you don't remember the first one exactly. This is refreshing and you're like, oh, oh, I know Matthew. Oh, I remember Matthew. Who was this guy again? Let that sink in. Do you remember he asked? He was like, if I do this for you, will you let me marry your sister? That's true, they... <clears throat> The translation has some issues, but, uh, not the same issues. Oh, hello, Ellie. How long have you been watching me sleep? Ellie, excuse me. She's come by to say hello. Well, we will not confirm or deny any of your theories, but, um, if you also want to keep them to yourself, feel free. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody's snoozing. Little old granny hanging out looking at the flowers. Humphrey! Being quiet on the quiet roof. Oh, well, hello, you two. Oh, Tengar. <sighs> These two. I'm just I'm not I'm not convinced they're the best fit for each other, but I don't I don't know. Hive. Yeah, like. I just Yeah, we can we can go we can go look for some look for some folks. Wait. Does this go up higher? Don't remember. Dead end past here. Oh right, it's the kobold streaming about the future. Yes, uh, Luca. Luca indicated that both Luca and Joey are bastard sons. Something is going on out there, but we don't actually have to go investigate immediately. Bum, 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 bum. 
You know, maybe this is a can of worms, but I'm just thinking about it. And I'm thinking about how, like, people ship um, Flick and Victor together, Camus and Mikkeltov, but I can't think of any... Like, and I can go through and be like, these are the stars that people tend to ship together, and it's always two dudes. But it's not ever two women. Is it that there aren't that many female characters in games? Is it that the girls who ship guys together are doing so in... This is a question that I think about. So the funny thing is with Rio and Joey is that people people liking them are slightly different in the way that they do it, but it's still that, yeah. Shin is having feelings over here. Chrono, I'm not talking about people ficking Suikoden right now. I've been part of the Suikoden fandom for decades. <laughs> for however long the game's been out. Um at least over two decades. <laughs> I'm talking about the fandom in general. Um, and also kind of extrapolating from there the uh, the longer... So... So... No, we're gonna go off on a slight tangent here, folks. Because this is something I've been thinking through. As a, as a woman who grew up closeted, um... Because I saw someone on Twitter recently who was like, you know, I had a I had a, a teacher who was an out lesbian when I was growing up and that made all the difference for me. And I'm like, I absolutely never had that experience. And like, I wonder what a difference that might have made. I mean, she would have probably gotten fired. <laughs> Sophie! You missed, Sunny! Oh, baby! She tried to jump up in a closet and she missed. Are you okay, old girl? It's a tough life being a cat. No! But, but it's interesting thinking about it. I ran like hell away from shipping female characters together because I was running like hell from myself. And that would be too close. Too, uh, too close for comfort. Um. No, but the thing is, there were plenty of men who shipped female characters together. Because they would commission me to draw their characters, and they would always be ashamed in a very specific way. Um, so I know that I know that that's out there um, a lot, um, and maybe maybe it's I just okay. Here, so here's the question I'm act actually asking: Why don't women ship two girls together? Why don't why didn't the Sweet Odin fans? Many of whom grew up to be queer women ship girls together. Why doesn't that happen? Why didn't that happen? I mean, I, I, I assume it happens more now. Plus we get... And like, it's part of it, like, I know what part of the reason why Slash Fic took off the way it did um, was because female characters weren't really well developed and didn't have really serious relationships, friendships even, with with other characters so it was kind of like if you wanted to have a meaningful connection between characters it was going to have to be two dudes because those are the only characters that got developed and had um and had relationships like that was part of the appeal of kirk and spock is like who else are you going to ship them with you know who or who else who else are you going to yeah you're going to pair them with like there aren't that many female characters the ones that are don't get that much screen time or development and don't have like this like super super in-depth complicated or, or intense for the era relationship and so that's that's part of the problem I think um Suikoden has a bigger cast than any JRPG ever because again you have 108 recruitable characters plus the entire villain cast plus other side characters so I don't know and like, and this is a question that I've asked myself a bunch um, because I heard somebody say recently, like, you know, uh, there's a difference between like shipping people 
shipping characters some and then and being a yaoi fangirl and like i had friends who were yaoi fangirls growing up and people are like no that's that's actually a really objectifying thing and i was like i never thought about it that way but i guess it is um so it's like i don't know it's disappointing that in a series where there are actually female characters in the game um then again if if I encountered somebody randomly on the internet who shipped two female characters from Suicoden together, I would immediately be suspicious of that person. Because I would assume they were a gross, skeevy dude. Which is interesting and something that I kind of have to interrogate inside of myself. Like I said, like I... I, I Draw romantic art was like a big thing of, of my art. So I would take a lot of art commissions. I would go around to anime conventions, fly around to anime conventions and pay my way by selling, by, by tabling and selling my art at tables, taking commissions. Um, and, uh, well, but the thing is, Chrono, I'm not talking about fanfic. <laughs> I'm talking about the fandom at large. Um, and I just, like, I know that there had to have been queer girls who were in these spaces. And I knew a few who were queer queer girls who were very unhappy at being girls, so I don't know, as they grew up, um, what they might have settled into as they got to know themselves better. I have some expectations that probably some of my friends growing up or some of the people I knew in that community um, perhaps were, you know dealing with, like, gender frustrations. Um. But, uh, like, there have to have been gay girls who would want girls to kiss. Why didn't that happen? I'm really sad. I'm really sad about that, actually. I'm I'm really sad on behalf of little Lauren who I think should have had that available as an option. That's the thing is that it just it wasn't an option. And like obviously it's not like things are easier for gay dudes than gay girls. Even in the 90s, it's different. But, like... It's just, like, it wasn't an option. <laughs> like, like thinking about it growing up, I knew, I knew gay dudes. My mom was a musician, and that's... Like, the arts are where a lot of queer people historically have, have found refuge and found home. Um, but I, I didn't know any gay women growing up that I knew of. <sighs> and like, my yaoi fangirl friends were like, you girls are gross. I'm just really sad. And the reason why I'm thinking about it in the context of Suikoden is because the Suikoden fandom was one of the fandoms in my life that I was actively a part of from the beginning. You know, I knew a lot of the fan artists. I, like, was involved with writing, like, play-by-chapter games. My sister and I ran the Suikoden 1 play-by-chapter game um, that then burst the Suikoden 2 play-by-chapter game, which I participated in. Like, I, 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 I went to Icy Brian's site to find fan art of stuff and have, like, a little blast from the past. I was like, oh, I know a bunch of these people. I still know some of them. Um. And so, so it, it's, it's, I feel it. Yeah, going to Icy Brian's these days, like, just, like, I think I might have had to use, I don't know if I had to use the Wayback Machine, but, um, it's, it's a hoot. It is a it is a blast from the past. Yeah, no, I don't think I ever had anything on Icy Brian's, but a bunch of my friends did, 
Um, and so it kind of like reinforces like, we produced a lot of fan content. We talked a lot about these characters. We role played out these characters and developed backstories and relationships between them. Yeah, I know, and I knew some of the people who were involved with Suiko Source and some of the people who were involved with Suiko X, and I remember. <laughs> I remember the drama. I was never involved with the drama, but some of my friends were. <laughs> oh, there was a lot of drama. <laughs> um. So, like, that's a fandom. Oh my god, that's a, that's adorable. I see Brian is still doing- I should- I should- I should- I should hunt him down. Find his stuff. I think that'd be great. I'm gonna find out. If you- if you- so if you're younger than us, um, and weren't on the internet as an RPG lover in the late 90s to early 2000s, I see Brian maintained- that wasn't even late 90s, that was like mid 90s. Um, I see Brian maintained a- a fandom shrine with art and thick and FAQs and stuff. It was a it was a thing. <laughs> so yeah, follow Chrono's link if you're curious about this blast from the past. I don't think there's any any art of mine up there. Um, so here's Camus being very polite. Mikletov being optimistic. They have the rules of knighthood on their little bookcase. Very important. They have they have one bed. <laughs> I can't be the only one who who notices that. Oh, they have a sideboard instead of an end table. Oh, RP Gamers Hub, thank you for raiding. Welcome. Are you are you part of the the Suikoden fan community? Have you just been playing Suikoden? Oh man. Okay, so is Icy Brian on? Is Icy Brian on Twitch? I need to find and follow Icy Brian. He's an actor? Whoa. Whoa. My mind is blown. <laughs> How are you doing, RP Gamers, RPG Gamers Hub? Oh man. Okay, send me that link when I'm not streaming at some point, Chrono. I wanna know. I wanna know. I'm really excited. Whenever you find out that somebody who was a nerd on the internet with you 20 years ago, I mean, I didn't know him, but we were, we were, we were young nerds on the internet at the same time. It's cool when they like go on to do things and make things and do stuff, you know, just, just like have like a little bit of pride for like our nerd friends. Man, one of my best friends from elementary and middle school is like a super, super like BuzzFeed celebrity. <laughs> Good for her. I'm really glad. She seems happy. But it was really weird when I first came across her like retweeted on Twitter and I was like, wait. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh man. Yeah, so they've talked about Nanami's cooking a few times because... Man, streaming Suikoden into wearing a cowboy hat. That's pretty great. So Nanami is definitely that uh, archetype. That anime archetype. The like aggressively like aggressive slightly slightly tomboyish, but you're not supposed to call her a tomboy. Terrible at cooking, etc., etc. Oh, hello, Gilbert, patron saint of freelancers everywhere. So we found Camus and Mickletop. Who else were you wanting to find? <laughs> Walker was having a good time. Hello, welcome. So Raiders, what have you been up to? Sorry, I, I don't know if you're still here, but I don't want you to just like have to feel like nobody's paying attention to you when you drop by. We were gonna find Futch, that's right. Where is Futch? I don't know actually, I have no idea. Looking for 
in case there are. We do not have the librarian yet. We have some books in storage, though Barbara is holding onto them for us. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, she is. We do. Oh, I forgot. I forgot that we... <sighs> we do. We have my sweet good into girlfriend. Oh man, you should absolutely give Suicoden 3 a try and play it with a friend maybe so it's less annoying. Man, yeah, no, this song is really good. I think I'm going to have to cover it at some point. <laughs> Oh, I have a concert coming up, by the way. Um, not this Saturday, but the next Saturday. And I am putting together some new music. So if you like... Um, Secret of Mana, or Mega Man, I will be music for you. That has never before been played because I was arranging it today <laughs> and sending it to my friends to record parts. So that'll be fun. Oh, we can go get Connell! Excellent! <laughs> Seeker of Sindar, okay. So isn't Sindarin, isn't that the name of the elves from something else? Yes. Gonna be more Secret of Mana music than I've done before, because all of my Secret of Mana covers were old. But the guy who's organizing the show, um, who's Ungaku Overdrive, he's dropped by a few times and I've been on his show before. Um, but he, I was like, hey, Ken, it's, um, since you're having me out again, like, what would you like for me to learn for you? He was like, could you learn something from Secret of Mana? I was like, yes. So it'll be good. Sindarin are the token elves. Okay. We know I want to see. Okay. So here's a little bit of history about the Sindar. They're basically... Elves. Oh, wait. I don't think we ever got this answer. I forgot about this. Well, it's actually, um, it's a, pr the, it's, 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 it's Mega Man, Mega Man 3, not Mega Man X. Mega Man X is all about the electric guitars. Um, but no, I will in fact be playing... I will be playing a theme near and dear to your heart, Blues. Yes, the true runes are always a good time. Cursed rune inscribed on his forehead so that they will always wander. Most seekers find only death like myself. Mm. Character list. So there's, here's a bunch of characters. You might recall there was an equivalent to this in the first game. But here they've got both... Um, this and then Richmond who is far more powerful than O'Neill was who was like I heard gossip that there's a person that exists um yeah but Commodore this one this one is blues song so so it works so I've got a, I've got a, a, an electric guitar and a bass friends who are going to be recording for me it's funny, I posted I posted on Facebook asking if anyone could record a, a guitar part for me in like no time. And like immediately my bandmate Kevin was like, Lauren! So I did that. Um, Clive is suspicious. Ulan isn't super. Oh, you can change Kinnison's ending. Oh, I guess I have to go get the swirls. I like Kinnison. Sam's uh, is bad news. Killy is a suspicious character. That is true. I did make it to Stormblood in Final Fantasy XIV. We will be playing more Stormblood tomorrow. Last week was our first venture into Stormblood. Um, yeah, I was going to put together my, my update for the week. I was working on that while I was waiting for my dinner to cook and it didn't cook. It was frustrating right before the stream. So yeah, it's exciting. Um, new stuff going on. So if you're free tomorrow night, we start at 8 p.m. Eastern time. We'll be playing more Stormblood. Okay. Killy. Hoy. 
<laughs> Not actually Temmie. Okay, you'll never guess what kind of character Simone is. Chris Murga is a suspicious character. Jean is not really what I would think of as a suspicious character. Genshin. Okay, hold on. Guide to trading. Oh no. I'm gonna have to do that at some point. I don't want to, but I will. When do I get the um the mirror? Okay, so let's see. What are we going to do? Bye, Dover. Good luck with your packing. Thank you for the raid. Thank you for hanging out. All right, let me take a look at what you told me to do here. Recruits. Okay. Thanks, Gex. I clearly do not remember that. So do I have to bring anything to do Bado's story? Because, okay, so Connell is in the forest village, because I remember that. Connell is a character my sister wrote, um, wrote for when we were involved in the play-by-chapter thing. Ah, okay, I got them. I remember, no, thank you. That's all I needed. I got that. Okay, so we want to bring Shiro. Oh my gosh. Hi, Kinnison and Shiro. We're gonna go get you some friends. We're gonna go into Leona's. No, this is not Leona's. This is Leona's. I like Shiro better. Although, do I have to have Mooka Mooka to get the other squirrels? I don't want to have Mooka Mooka in my party, but I will if I need to. I don't know that I ever recruited all the squirrels, so... Tell me who to put- who do I need to put in my party for this? Because I am not a master of recruitment. I need an open space. Wide open spaces. Okay. There you are, Shiro. Woof! Who else do we bring? Is there anyone else that I need to bring in my party? Please let me know. Just gonna meow a little bit. All right, so we're gonna bring our strongest. I mean, Ulan is pretty tough. We can only fit two characters because we're gonna go get the other squirrels or are we not gonna get the other squirrel? I guess, no. We won't get the squirrel, Um, but we'll do that later. Um, do we want to do Flick and Victor? And Tengar? Yeah, the thing with uh, Mikletov and Camus is that they're not... I don't know that they're leveled up. Are they leveled up? Hmm. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter in this game. <laughs> the most important squirrels in the world. I mean, we can put them in. Oh no, Taurus. Oh no. <laughs> Things can get squirrely real fast. <sighs> so, do we want to put Camus and Mikletov in? I don't know that they're necessarily the most powerful characters. <coughs> but I don't mind putting them in. My sword is yours. Bum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. Okay, so then we need a caster. Should be Tengar. Could be Rena. 
Who is in the pretty boy attack in this game? Is it is it is it Flick, Camus, and and maybe a character we haven't seen yet? Oh, is it? Is there a pretty boy attack and a pretty man attack then? Because I know that there is a difference between those. Because um, there's the pretty girl attack and then there's the beauties attack and those are different unites. One is like the younger girls and then there's the tough, strong, cool women or something. I don't know. Who do we want? Do we want to want Tengar? Tengar. We need somebody who can heal. No, 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 we can heal. We're good. Okay. All right. What? Okay, I get them. You have to tell me now. If you're doing a spit take, you have to tell us now. They retranslated the name. The fancy lad attack. Okay, who's in the fancy lad attack? <laughs> That's amazing. see do we have any new armor that's better flick camus and mickletop oh that's that's like practically cheating camus and mickletop come together they're a matched set <sighs> but yeah i know that works let's go buy some better gear for our dudes maybe see if they need it go find a weapon sharpener the, the door go in door Alright, <laughs> I'll never get over the not capitalized by himself. Okay, so Tengar needs a new hat. Sure. I think that's everything. Nina fights with a book on a rope. I don't remember that. The knights need scale mail? Did they? Oh, hold on. Oh, they do, don't they? It's a bit expensive, but whatever. There's a cutie girl. I think that's the cutie girl and the pretty woman or something like that. Or maybe it's the cutie girl and the beauties attack. The groovy attack. Oh my god. <sighs> okay. I think we're good to go. We might have stalled so much that Richmond is back though. Sorry, this is gonna be a short, shorter stream because of my half hour delay at the beginning. Apologies, friends. Sorry. <laughs> you should know better than me, right? <laughs> That's cute. Nami wants to go home, but Richmond is making fun of me for the fact that I'm asking him. Fair. All right. Oh, we should probably save. 
save, and then we're gonna go teleport out to Forest Village, I guess. Ah, no, I'm. Somebody remind me to make the controls be the stick instead of the D-pad because love. Eileen's siblings, man. Eileen's siblings. <sighs> no, Alex. We're not going to go on another dumb adventure finding, treasure finding adventure with you. You do not seem to have very good common sense. Yes, Ailee has good siblings. They just also give her a hard time. Oh, sound set. Thank you. All right, I'd forgotten. Thank you. Better see Barbara. That sounds like a like 90s sitcom, doesn't it? Or something? I don't know. Let's get a... I think I've got a sound set. I do have a sound set. Wait, 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 wait. Lock is my favorite. Matilda Greenhill border. Okay, let's get this. Let's get this right. Forest path, Greenhill Matilda. Got it. Okay. I think he's right up here. Not very deep in, I think. There he is. Hello, friend. Oh man, I'm not really familiar with the city of Final Fantasy Opera Omnia. But I do really like Final Fantasy VI a lot. So I could be convinced to play a thing that has Final Fantasy VI in it. <sighs> By the way, my fanfic is now over 90,000 words posted on AO3, so... I thought Beto would join me. I have... I have the dog in my party. Did I do something wrong? Oh, I don't really do gotcha. It doesn't really work for me. Did I do something wrong? Am I failing? I haven't been into the room yet. I let these guys go. Okay. Hello, Chadu. Just gonna let these guys go. Should I go get Connell since I'm already... Yeah, I'm gonna just go get Connell. That is that is the thing you could say that would make me play whatever this thing is. That that is that is that is that's it. That's my weakness. I have no resistance. All right, where is this little child? I know he's, he's somewhere. Where are you, kiddo? Are you in the inn? Is he in the inn? Oh no, I don't remember. Oh, is there a guy with a sheep over there? Let's go find the guy with the sheep. Let's go buy his sheep. Everyone's like, excuse me, Lauren. I saw the last one that had an animal to buy. Yes, let's do that. Uh, excellent.
Oh, he's in here, isn't he? Yes. Hello. My sister has cosplayed as Connell. She's like one of maybe two people on the planet. Can I not give him the sound set? I have it in my inventory. Okay. <sighs> Am I just doing it wrong? You know, somebody could interpret the characters a little differently than me and I'd be okay with it. Oh, the same recruitment block. Okay, well, that's fine. We tried. We'll go, we'll go progress the plot slightly. It's okay. No, I, got my, I don't mind. Just like listening to some music. We get to let go all the enemies here anyway, so it's all good. Man, I love Locke and Sully's so much. They are my OTP in a very intensely devoted sort of way. Remember, you know, I was just saying about the whole like 90,000 words of fanfic? And that's just what's been posted on AO3 so far? Yup. I just really like them. I have a poster that I bought off of someone who watched my Final Fantasy VI playthrough and was inspired to draw it. So I was like, this is mine now, I will buy it from you. And then immediately below it is the cross stitch of Lock and Sully's that my sister made for me for Christmas. So, and probably on Saturday, oh, Saturday's stream is going to be um, an art stream, by the way. Um, and I might do robot girls or mermaids, or I might draw, I really want to do some title page art for my fanfic. Or my other fanfic, you know. So, you can tune in to see, do I finally draw, finally finish that picture of Tough Stuff, so I can get her made into a sticker to put on my laptop? Tough Stuff is the name of my laptop, you see. Um, um, so it starts off with, um, Solitary Island, and then it um, cuts to Seth Figaro, and then it goes through the game. <laughs> um, yes, my laptop is Flutiebot's girlfriend. Flutiebot is our bot. She's the one who provides quotes. Although I'm not sure if she's working right because she's not. I'm gonna have to probably re re connect her to Discord or something. <laughs> Amazing. I love that I mentioned Flutiebot and everyone's got to like pull out Flutiebot's quotes. It's okay, that's what she's here for. She enjoys it. Oh, that's a good quote, no girl. Do you folks just like remember where the quotes are that you like? Sorry, she does have a cooldown to make sure that she doesn't get. <laughs> I, I don't know what that quote is, but I like it. Sorry, I think she must be on cooldown. All right, let's go progress some plot so we can recruit people and also have drama. All right, plot. I like that quote. <laughs> oh man. The Highland Army seems to have appeared in Rada Town, which if you'll remember is just down the road from us. <laughs> oh, I need to hand over the sheep. Okay, fair, no girl. I'll do that. Yeah, so then she got his head cut off. But, but we don't know that. We don't have like gossip on the inside telling us what's going on there. Kiva and his son. We can't solve this problem unless we know what... So I I wonder if you can't open a lock unless you know the combination. Is that an idiom? Because I don't know that I've heard that one before. Like It makes sense, but I, like, I have to process it and be like, what would that mean? Oh, you have to know the problem before you can solve it. 
But I've never heard that before as an idiom, so... <laughs> Shoe disapproves. Alright, who's gonna go? Is it gonna be... Camus Mikultov or Shiro? I guess if we can't recruit... Can we not recruit? Please do inform me. Do we have to take Flick? Have you decided that they're a matched set? Okay. Yes. Grrr. Alright, boys. Camus does seem to be the weakest of them. Okay. Let's go talk to our dudes again. Oh, what? Our dudes aren't there to be talked to, huh? Just Apple hanging out. Alright, you want me to take Flick and Victor together? We're gonna break up one of the match sets if we do this. Either way. Yeah, because we can't have all four of them in our party because there is only room for three front row fighters. And they are all front row fighters. They have swords. <sighs> so what is our preference here? Hmm? What do we do here, folks? Do we have a preference? Do I take Mikkeltov and Camus out even though I just put new armor on them? Put it on back in. Be no complaints about that, huh? Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> okay. Let's put Michael Top back in then. No, it's all good. So do you want to take Camus out and put Flick in? I mean, that's actually probably a better substitute because they're both magic using. Yeah, and so we go to five has the different stances, formations, formations, and you unlock different formations and it, it, it's pretty great. Okay. We're gonna keep this party for now. That works for me. All right, so now we go teleport. So let's go see if we got anything else from Richmond. We gotta maximize our Richmondness. I burned my tongue on dinner. Don't like that sensation. All right, Richmond. <laughs> she trains all night long. Who, who should we look up now? Who are you curious about? Like, should we continue digging into the private lives of the girls who would really rather that the main character not know every detail about them? Or should we... We've got a vote for Tuda. Does anybody have any other requests? Tradu wants Eileen. So Tuna and Eilie are our two votes. Does anybody else have an opinion on the subject? Oh man, the muscle in my back is starting to spasm. That's not good. I want... Tuda is a little doctor's assistant. This little kid.
If we've got multiple votes for Eilie, we can do Eilie. Okay, no, Chrono wants Tuda? Okay. Let's see what happens with this little kiddo. He, actually. He's a little boy. Um. Alright, so then we're going to go to... No? It's all good. Can't always tell by looking at someone. Do I want to go to Radit Town? Sure, I probably should have saved, but I didn't. Any preferences, folks? It's a vocal version of this song, but I don't know the lyrics very well. <laughs> oh, I love Victor. He's like, oh, good. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Victor set anything on fire. I've heard of Radiata stories. Is that the one where you can kick everything? Man, you and me both, sir. Suffer the same fate as Muse, yeah. Godly dressed man. I didn't say it just because your guilty conscience is talking. Uh, I did not like the one where you can kick everything. So I, I played it some and then I stopped playing it. Because I felt like it was very silly. And try ace games are kind of hit or miss for me. <laughs> the game yes yes no try ace for me I mean I'm, I'm mad at them because of the last two star ocean games um, but I really like Valkyrie profile the original which I thought about playing on stream so I can finally get the best ending all right let's see what's going on what is happening here Um, I own this game, but I am emulating it. Um, oh, you're saying, like, were, was I able to play other Suikoden's? Yes, I have played all of the Suikoden games in the main story. I have not played, um, I have not played Tactics, and I have not played the card stories. But I have played 1 through 5. Regrettably, I have played 4. Oh, really, Ty? That actually sounds very Tri-Ace. They're really not good at holding two. They, their tonal shifts are very... badly done, <laughs> I think. Um, but I loved two and three. Star Ocean two and three. Um, the Valkyrie Profile, which is just nothing but melodrama and tragedy all the way through. I love it. Oh, man. We may do that, Noel Girl. If we ever need... If we need, I just have to get through three first, but if we need, um, Lauren streams a game for charity, it will be Sweet in Four. I loved Valkyrie Profile. I liked Star Ocean 3, too. Oh, man. What do we got going on here? A bunch of guards. Some civilians. <sighs> yeah. 
Yeah, so words got around about what happened with Muse. Yeah, Tyus was saying, I feel like Trice has some problems <laughs> with pacing with tone. I promise that no such thing happened. Character freaks out a little bit. Sorry, Rio. Oh, did I do that wrong? Should I have stayed and talked to him, actually? Did I do that wrong? He's very observant, Blue Glass. Probably, honestly, my guess would be that they're anticipating um, trouble, so they're kind of paying close attention. Should we go back and get that dialogue? I did just save. We're gonna do it. Alright, folks. It's priorities. I thought they were gonna pull, like, no, we can't run away. But, in fact, we did run away. Is the one on the DS a remake of the first? Yes, we are committed to the lore. It's what we're here for. <laughs> oh. All right. <clears throat> we go and we do this. All right, I'm gonna rush through this. Cause I feel like they remade the first one at some point. But I don't know. I didn't like the second one at all. I felt like they forgot, or they, they, they weren't interested in what I was interested in in Valkyrie Profile and instead they just made it super anime. There was it on the PSP, of course it was on the PSP. Let's do this. <laughs> Victor does not approve of this! Ah. No, this is good that we reset to get this bit of dialogue. So there you go. Little bit of detail. What kind of wedding present do you send somebody in that case? Like, about Joey. I love, I love that Victor and Flick continue to feel personally invested in what happens to Joey. Like, they're like, these are kids that we got into this situation. This is bad. Yes, he's their son. Yes, they've adopted us both. Alright. 
Uh oh. Everyone's gathered in the Great Hall. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Is she always here? Your husband, Yoshino. He is the walking embodiment of an exclamation point, apparently. Sorry. Hi, uh, Beast, by the way. Didn't say hi to you. My day's been alright, yeah. It's been productive, but it's all right. Yeah, I didn't think she was always there, which is why I was like, wait, I have to go talk to her. Okay. Forward progression? Or do we go and recruit? Is Yoshino their last name? Oh, that's right! We've seen her wash the Gengen before, I think. It's very cute. Gengen is adorable. Because <sighs> he's freed Y. No, just, I'm wondering if, like, the pacing... Yamamoto? Okay. I mean, that would make sense. I, I think... I know, I think... Because Yoshino is a female first name, I think. So, that... Uh, Yamamoto, okay. Hey, Sophie! So, is this... Do we recruit now? Call him Freddy, that's a good name. Oh, Sophie, you're all curled up. I can't pick you up. What a good defense. Yes, you're snoozing. Oh, sleepy, sleepy. I can't pick you up. Just take my word for it. She's very cute. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't know if we can recruit yet, so I think we should let's let's go ahead and and, and progress. Because I think we can't. We think we got people in our party too. <laughs> also, we had a conversation with Klaus. She was not afraid. Man, knowing that Shu is actually a sweet, loving older brother to Apple has completely changed everything about how I look at him as a character. That's interesting. I suspected once we learned that that it was going to make a difference, and it does. <laughs> Finally fight a decent battle. No strategy? <laughs> Wait a minute. Shu is so cocky. Hi, Guts. Yes, we should probably reorganize our troops and see how they're doing. Ugh. Yeah, so Shu and Apple, like, they, they establish that, um, like, they t she talks about he was, like, an older brother to me, um, um, in the translation that we got, but apparently in the Japanese version, in the original, it is more apparent, and they have a very sweet way of talking to each other, so... All right. This is not a kind of strategy that I'm good at because I just don't feel like putting the brain power into it. Teresa's unit is not good, I don't think. Yeah. Teresa's unit is bad. Luke's unit has no defense. Six, six, yeah. This is also a pretty bad unit. But I don't know that it really makes sense to weaken any of the other units. 
you know. So actually, this is a good fit, um, because uh, Templeton lets you go farther and oh, it's just repair self. Never mind. No. I like the music. I think it has possibly the best soundtrack of any any video game. So not necessarily that it's my favorite soundtrack, but I think it might be the best. Um. Hmm. So I feel like Juan should be with Templeton so you can go send somebody to heal if you want to, but I don't know if that's actually a good strategy or not. Okay, so they've got they've got a decent attack. They've got some defense. I don't know what the bodyguard stat does in this case. Okay, so this is now Victor's defense is, or offense is lower, considerably lower. Victor probably shouldn't be the healer one, actually. So heal, shortcut, and some defense. Okay, so they're, they're our healer group. Gosh, these folks do a lot of damage. Defense, jeez. Teresa's group is just not good. I don't think I have cavalry or flying that yet though. I haven't done a lot of Yeah, like if the entire game were this, I would focus on it and make more sense. Does Flick have cavalry? Oh, he does, doesn't he? But you can't. People who are in charge of units. Why is it ducks? Critical lightning rune. Oh, I have some characters in reserve. Never mind. I didn't. I was like, it's, I feel like I've got more people than this. I don't know what invention is, but okay. Put Humphrey in somebody who has no defense. Okay, that's good. I don't know what the bodyguard move does in this. Cavalry goes farther. Yes. <sighs> Very funny, Chrono. The bodyguard guards your body. <sighs> ah, I guess that's true. Luke does do, does like to die a lot. Does he, does he die a lot in this version? I knew he died a lot in the first game. Does he die a lot in this game? Is that still his thing? What is the deal with that? Okay. We'll stick the one in there then. Yeah, but again, it's since, since it's not that much of a focus, I feel like Teresa doesn't, I don't know. I mean, we can always just go for it and see what happens. You know?
This is a very powerful team. They just hit things really hard. Jeez, hi-ho is good. Like, does this team need to be that good? Like... I could trade Yamku... Well, no. Uh, there's nobody who who is good enough to make a big difference. Like, nobody else will add more than Shin does. Yeah, she's just really bad. Her stats are really bad. Just They just are. So we can just, like, let her stand with lightning. And hope that that happens. Okay. We're gonna... We're gonna save. Hi, Ridley. Kiva is tough. Pitcher is, as always, a little bit anxious about things. Let's go save. And then we're gonna give this a try. Oh, and I still haven't set up the thing that play the music properly. I didn't turn on that. I should have done. So we'll just like get the battle music going on YouTube. Some of them, yeah. But I think it's not always the case. Oh! The music is playing now. Okay. Maybe it was a different song that was supposed to play in those other battles. I love this song. <laughs> Good man. Everybody's favorite is Roud. Yeah, we do not like him. So we are outnumbered. Like, do I want them to come to me? Yeah, I'm gonna make them come to me. Wow, Luke's team can fight from very far away. Maybe I should move them closer. Yes, unfortunately, this game is not the most, most competently made game. May I speak freely? Like, it does seem kind of uncharacteristic for you to just be like, it's fine, we'll just charge on ahead. Ridley is concerned. Ridley is not thrilled about this course of events.
Oh no, we took a wound. Oh no, that's the worst. No, don't you dare, don't you dare. I'm so mad. No! Okay, I gotta heal. Oh man. Well, the kobolds seem to be able to soak that just fine. Where is my healing? Can you... Oh, that is like everybody. That seems like overkill. Who has healing? Uh, somebody here has healing. Oh, Tuda. Let's repair self. You're not the wounded ones. I just don't want to lose them. I'm gonna... Yeah, he does. I, just, I don't want to use it yet. If I don't need it, if that makes sense. Let's see how this goes. Wait, what rune do I have? Repair salt. Okay, you're gonna attack these guys. Come on, come on. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. Okay. Oh, these guys can get, like, out of the way. Who's got healing? Yeah, like, I'm just, I'm wondering if, that Teresa is so weak. Putting her in, well, I guess she doesn't have to stay in the front row. You put her here. What room do you have? Oh, too bad she sucks. But it was worth a try. What rune do I have? Yeah, no, that's just, I, I don't think that that's, I don't think you set that. I think that's a passive skill. But I might be mistaken.
All good. We're good. We're fine. Knock him over here. Victor, beat him up. Set him on fire. I think I've got fire spears. <laughs> I can, in fact. And I will. Oh, that, that was awesome. Uh... do we have lightning magic which of these guys should we fry let's go with this one they're farther away maybe because somebody else will be able to get these guys right here so we'll take these guys out yeah okay This, I think this will only do one damage, but still. Oh, what? Didn't even didn't even do any damage. Well, we tried. I might regret this. But I want to take out this one. Hold on, let's see. Can you take out... Okay, we're good. Can you take out this guy? Come on, do it. Take him down. That's not quite as much as I was hoping you were going to do, but that's okay, Victor. I love you anyway, friend. What runes do I have? Shortcut. No terrain effect. Okay. Let's see if we can take out this guy. Oh, that did not go well for me. Oh, this might be this might be the end, actually. Well, Victor's here to take care of business. Thanks, Victor. Please don't kill my main character. I'll be really sad. That's acceptable. I'll take that. No, don't you dare. Okay, this is it. This is it. Yeah, rock, paper, scissors was better. Oh, okay. We survived that somehow. Miraculously. Come on, Victor. Yeah! Good job, Victor. Don't you dare. I guess that's true, I do have high defense. Withdrawal. We were kind of winning. Everything's going well. I feel like we did do a fair bit of damage to them.
Everyone is really confused by this at this point. Alright, we're gonna go save. Yes. I do actually prefer the the slower version of this song. I think this one is a little bit wacky. Oh no! Gadget's having some trouble. Hayo is like, I know you're trying to progress the plot, but have you thought about cooking mini games? Hayo, we've already played the cooking mini game once. Do we need to play it again? And he's like, yes. Hello, Richmond. <laughs> All right, you wanna do cooking? We can do cooking. Okay, Tuta is 11. It smells like somebody in this house has burned a food. I can smell the cooking downstairs. I hate it when they make fish sticks. They had fish sticks last night. All right. So we're gonna go cook. Did we just save? Let's go save just to be sure. <laughs> I don't remember if we've done that or not. All right. So there's things I want to say, but I won't say them until later. Ah. Yeah, I thought, well, because Tuna looks super young. Like he looks like he's like eight. So he's, he's, or six, like he looks tiny. All right, so shall we do another cooking mini game? Oh, I need to go turn in my, um, my sheep. I have a sheepy. Sheep, 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 sheep. See if I can find my way to turn in the sheep. Sheeps, yes, I did it. I did it right. Oh, I'm so proud of me. Yay. <laughs> Thanks, Chrono. <laughs> oh man. Bow, 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 bow. All right. Because I got off to a late start tonight, I feel like we're going to see a lot less plot than we maybe could. Pink team. That little sneak hi-yo. I was like, what is going on? We're good. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna do this. Oh man! There's a few characters here who just really like food. This is gonna be glorious. Oh no, Luca Blade is raiding us. Oh no, it's the worst. <laughs> oh no, being invaded by Luca Blade is probably one of, if not the worst, I think, people to be invaded by in general. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna put forth our best defense. Please don't slaughter us all. <laughs> oh man. Welcome everybody. Let me guess. You like this week of the series? <laughs> we are having a having a cook-off because the cooking new game is delightful fun. Um, welcome, welcome. Yeah, I saw Luca Blade. I saw you followed me the other night. <laughs> I was like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> Highland is here. <laughs> huh. 
Well, welcome. Have you been having fun tonight? Have you been playing through this game? Help us figure out what dishes to cook and see if Lauren can actually correctly identify what counts as an appetizer in this game. Uh, see, see, he's a bear. Everything about him is bear-like. Oh, geez, seven hours in Sweetgood and three in particular. I mean, at least it's not Sweetgood and four. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I've told folks here because we're so the Suikoden games are like some of my absolute favorites from way back in the day. So I'm introducing my stream to them, um, and we've talked about going through um, the whole series. <laughs> but I'm like, we'll have to do Suikoden for some sort of a charity fundraiser thing so that I feel better <laughs> about the fact that I'm suffering through that game. Uh, I do really want to play through five again, though, because I've only seen it once, and I don't remember it very well. Yes, yes, but careful, no spoilers. Um, a few of the viewers haven't seen it before, so those of us who know the game talk about the game as circular, like, like we, 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 we tiptoe around things until they happen. Um, Suigoden 4 is improved if you name the main character Bubble. And that is the kindest thing. Well, there were a few things that were decent in it, so they remade some of them in Suikoden 5. Except poor Eleanor, she deserved a better game. <laughs> Alright, so Victor will eat anything, I believe it. Barbara also will eat anything, amazing! <laughs> I don't remember the inventory system at all in 4, but I would be happy for 4 if something about that game was good. Oh, man. <laughs> so Nikoltov likes meat. Bulgan like, okay, so we have a bunch of people who just like everything. Amazing. Amazing. We just, we should have had Luke, like, sitting where Nikoltov is, just to, like, be the ultimate grumpagus. There's a fun word. All right. Fried rice did seem to go over well last time. And these are people who are not very picky. So is salad an appetizer? According to Suigoden 2, does salad count as an appetizer? Yes, we we just we just got through the uh, the bad time from use, uh, but we haven't we haven't had the details of the bad time from use shared with us yet. Um, we just uh, we ran away after Ridley was upset that the kobolds were put in the front lines. Um, I don't feel that Muse had it coming. Salad is indeed an appetizer. All right. Okay, do we want to do regular salad? Oh, well, thank you. Thank you to, uh, to you and to Jared. So I assume that you're not playing through the game for the first time, that it is a replay for you. Salad with soy sauce? Which one is that? Island salad. Oh, island salad was something that um, that the enemy made last time, and actually that did go over very well. I've only played it like three or four times, and it's been quite a while. Let's do something really meaty for our main course. If we have anything. <laughs> yes, the enemy. Look. Cooking mini games are serious business. We are fighting a battle here. A cooking battle. Barbecue meat bun is good. Oh, and gyoza is, as we learned, a main course and not an appetizer. So. Oh, man. <laughs> Well, thank you, Luca Blight. Um, my ideal, I mean, you won't see it right now because we're doing this, but what I generally do is, um, is, uh, analyze, like, what's going on in the story. I have a, I have an MFA in creative writing, and so I like to talk about the storytelling and things like that from that perspective. So that's usually what I do, but right now, <laughs> um, right now, uh, 
we're we're having a cooking battle. <laughs> oh man! So should we have a regular meat bun, or should we try something else? What even is pirate's bun? Like I I, I don't know. Pizza bun. Pizza bun sounds like something that this crew would like. You know? Excellent. Excellent, Luca. Oh man, engineering and creative writing. That's a that's a good combination. I've had a few friends who managed to combine both of those two things. Um I usually do first playthrough streams, uh, but I had talked about the Suicoden games so much that several viewers over the years had gone to play the Suicoden games because I talked them up. So I figured I would just inflict them on everyone. And so that's what we're doing. Icon? Is there an icon? No, we don't have the icons yet. So I really want to just go with cake. Yeah, let's just do a cake. Well, let's do shortcake. <laughs> to be fair, the enemy did surprisingly well with raw tomato last battle. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Island salad, pizza bun, and shortcake. See how this goes. Oh, right. My stream logo thing that I did. All right. Oh. Doing my best here. Doing my best. Trying so hard. Trying so, so hard. Come on, come on, come on. We did it. Oh no, the challenger made tempura shrimp. That's a good appetizer. <laughs> oh, and I do sing along with the music a lot. Um, I play flute. I've done a number of Suicoden covers over the years, so some folks who like Suicoden have seen those around, which is a cool feeling. <laughs> um, it's actually really weird. I popped into the AUDEN Discord server when that Kickstarter was going. <laughs> People were like, Lauren, hey, I don't know you, but I've seen your flute covers of Suicoden music. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Oh my god, I, I I went to the um the concert that they had um in twenty eighteen in Tokyo. It was it was pretty great. That was a very good time. I do um it's on so you'll have to dig through my 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 game streams, since that's most of what I've got, but if you look on there, like there are speaker and covers. Um it's a... Uh, yeah, Miki Higashino, Miki Higashino, so... Okay, sorry regulars, you've heard this before, you'll hear it again. I don't have tons of things that I can be like, listen to my cool life experience. So I play flute in the video game music scene, and I know a lot of people, and I've played at... My, my band has played at PAX before, we've played at MAGFest, and I know the people who do a lot of the booking at MAGFest. So they had the composer for the Panzer Dragoon Saga, um, needed a flute and a, and a string quartet and a percussionist to play her music when she was the guest of honor at MAGFest. And they were like, we need a flute. Lauren, come be the flute. Um, and so she had a friend of hers who they released music together on the Brave Wave label. But she had a friend of hers singing. And I was like, looking at these people up, and I was like, oh, it's the woman who sang Reminiscence. That's cool. I'm going to freak out, lose my mind, have like a panic attack before our rehearsal, but I'll get through. Um, and so uh, so I wound up like getting through that show. And then afterwards they were like, let's all have let's all have dinner together um, at the hotel because it's a convention. Um, and they're like, we want burritos because we're in America and that's what you do. Um, and I wound up talking to the woman who sang um, Reminiscence. And it turns out actually she was the one who did the 3D modeling for Suicoden 3, which I wish I'd known because my sister's friends were all cosplaying Suicoden 3 characters at that concert. But we talked a whole bunch and I played her my cover of Reminiscence as she cried and I cried. And then we made fun of bad cover art because apparently American bad cover art is infamous over there. But she had never seen the American cover art for Suicoden 1. So I got to introduce her to that. <laughs> she was like, who are those supposed to be? I'm like, 
Well, I'm pretty sure that one's the hero. I'm just like, no. I'm like, he's got the staff. She's like, no. <laughs> it was really fun. Um, but we kept in touch. Um, and uh, she had invited me to some music thing. And I was like, I can't do that. So then she reached out to me when uh, I think it was Music Engine um, was putting together their Sweet Good and Two concert. And she was like, hey, I'm not performing at this, but my teacher is. Um, do you, if you can make it to Tokyo, I will get you backstage and get you to the show for free. And I was like, okay, I will come to Tokyo for that. I managed to get a plane ticket for like $500 US. Um, so in 2018, I spent three weeks in Tokyo. Um, got to meet some video game music people that um, like I got to have dinner with the composer, the Panzer Dragon composer, because I'd met her before, and a friend of mine who was a translator, and I got to have dinner with Kikuta san which is amazing, and I forgot that we were Facebook friends, and then he made fun of me for, for writing dramatically about my Japan adventures. So this is a really good time, but then the Sweet Go 2 concert happened, and I got to be there for the rehearsal and both concerts, um, and I like kept crying during the music, and like the Japanese people are much more stoic about enjoying something, but I'm just like waterworks. Like when I'm streaming a game that I don't know, like I cry like all the time. I even cried. I mean, we just finished the scene with with uh, Futch and Bright, and I was tearing up. Like, and I know what's happening, and it's not even like the most heartbreaking or most emotional moment in the game. But still, you know, you cry. So I'm like crying during the rehearsal, and every time, every time they would they would take a break to like work on something, everyone who was hanging out with me, including Mikiyoshi, you know, would turn around and look at me to see if I was still crying. And they'd be like, again, Lauren? Like, I can't help it. I'm having feelings. It was amazing. Um, so I got to, yes, I was the, I was the stereotypically emotional American and I had like bright pink hair at the time. Like they were all just like, this is exactly what we want our American fan to be. I suppose I lived up to that stereotype. No, so, um, higashino san signed something for me, which she doesn't usually do, but she, it was something about even though we don't speak the same language, music is a language we all speak. Um, because somebody translated it for me. Um, and uh, I got to shake Mariyama's hand and tell him on behalf of the American Sweet Code and Fandom, thank you for giving us your games. It was really cool. <laughs> oh man. It was awesome. It was, it was amazing. It was a really great experience. Um, and, uh, yeah, I I did my best uh, <laughs> to represent the fandom with my whole heart. It was really, really, really cool, honestly. It was one of those like once in a lifetime experiences um, that just, I don't know, it uh, just from start to finish, it was amazing. And I don't know that I'll ever be able to like pay them back for like the, the kindness that they showed me, but um, it was, it was incredible. Um, and just musically, like it was absolutely fantastic. They're the same people who did the Undertale fifth anniversary concert that was, that they they aired the recording of it um, last year. Um, but their their Sweet Odin concert was, was phenomenal. Um, and of course I cried the entire time, both times that I saw the concert. It was great. <laughs> I'm really excited for Aoden, yes. Um, if I'd had the money, I would have put my cat, my old cat in it, but instead I got the, I got the soundtrack. Um, I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to it. Um, Suikoden, my sister and I, when we were kids, like when Suikoden was new, we ran a play-by-post Suikoden RPG. Um, and, uh, and I still have a few friends from that era. Um, quite a long time ago, um, early days of the internet. Um, so Suikoden has been super important to me for a very very long time like I'm divorced now but when I got married like we walked down the aisle to an arrangement of Locks and Sully's themes because I'm the biggest Locks and Sully's fan girl you will ever meet maybe um and then afterwards that we went back to the second half of the ending or the second half of the intro theme from this game the victorious part yeah that's just I just really like Suikoden I really like video game music <laughs> It's my life. It was my career for a little while. Not, that, not as a musician, but I used to work at a video game music label. Um, now I work for some of the OCR people, but not making video game music soundtracks and things. So yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that's my story. That's my Suikoden story. 
<laughs> oh man. Yeah. Real tempura, none of this fake tempura stuff. Not allowed. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I was, I was, I need to get um, for my sister a photo of, I did a painting of Futch and Black and Bright for her back in high school. Um, but I'm in Canada and she's in Texas, so I can't just go get a photo of it. So I have to ask her to send one so I can show it on stream. I meant to do that for this week, but I didn't. So we'll do that. No, you could have faux tempura. This is the real deal. Let's see what people think. That doesn't matter. They're okay with it. But are they going to love my island salad? Come on, don't let me down, folks. So I am half Canadian. My mom is Canadian, but I grew up in the U.S. Um, but I'm now living in Canada because I can. Because I have dual citizenship. Um, but I've only been here for most of my time living in Canada. has been during the pandemic. So I'm, I'm hoping to go home and maybe get vaccinated uh, in the next couple of months. So, But yeah, if, if you hear me say sorry... <laughs> I moved here and people are like, you don't sound Texan. I'm like, no, I sound like you guys. Um, <laughs> I'm living in Toronto now. My mom, my mom's originally from Hamilton. <laughs> so. <laughs> so yeah, no, it is actually funny when I started hanging out with some of my, my friends who like live in Toronto or the Southern Ontario uh, region. And they like met me in person for the first time and they were like, you're Texan? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't sound Texan, I can promise you that, despite having spent most of my life there. All right, island salad, come on, come on, come on. Yeah! Yes! See, I wanted a big city experience because I lived in the suburbs mostly and then I lived in Austin, Texas, which is not big city, even though it is. Um, but I was like, big, big cities in the US are really cold and unfriendly. <laughs> so we'll go to Toronto. <laughs> it's warm. Not like physically temperature warm. I'm wearing a hoodie. It's cold out. It's halfway through May. You can like be swimming by now in Texas. I am so confused. <laughs> oh man, look at this. Island salad, thank you, blood of the gods. Like I'm taking that lesson to heart from here. We have a couple of people from Alberta in our community that they're not here right now, I don't think. Yeah, see like Florida and Texas are both in like, okay, I have to try to converting. I haven't yet fully internalized conversions between Fahrenheit and Celsius. It's very confusing, but uh, it was 41 degrees here this morning when I woke up. <laughs> it's so confusing to me. Grotin. Oh no! My, my band did a cover of The Chase that I want us to turn into an actual Suica into medley, but I kept getting distracted trying to figure out which songs to put in it, so. Oh, the Swag Fam is here! Hey, Swag Fam, what's up? We're having a cooking contest in Suica in 2. It's amazing. Sweet Jesus, thank you for the subscribing. Subscript and scrim give give subs. Good. Yes, thank. Thank. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome. And thank you for following Eric. It's fine that they're there are friends that I have like dropped by their streams for years and then I'm like, wait, I'm not following you. How did that happen? So it's like it looks like a bun that has that has pepperoni on the outside. I think we might not win this one. Wait, is it the, the, the he made fried rice for dessert? Is that what this is? This is fried rice for dessert. All right, I think, I think my shortcake is gonna beat the fried rice for dessert. 
Just a hunch. Just a hunch. <laughs> Come on, don't let me down, team. Don't let me down. I mean, fried rice could be a dessert if you wanted it to be, but I might question your decisions a little bit. Yeah, it's... Well, so... So... Strawberry shortcake. We're gonna go on a tangent. A briefish one. So there's a lot of different ways that you can interpret shortcake in the context of strawberry shortcake. So strawberry, so shortcake itself is a particular kind of cake. And I think it's a cake, if I remember correctly, I think it's originally a traditional sponge and therefore it's made without an artificial leavener, which would be baking soda, or baking powder. So you whip the egg whites and that's where you get the fluffiness. Um, but um, strawberry shortcake then should be this very like fluffy sponge cake, but if you are in the American South and you order strawberry shortcake, or if somebody who wants to be like relatively lazy, if you make um, buttermilk biscuits, you can make a strawberry shortcake with biscuits instead of with cake. And it's the same sort of thing. You have a Swedish biscuit, sweet, sweet-ish, not Swedish, sweet-ish biscuit. So it's slightly sweeter buttermilk biscuit. Cut it in half, put whipped cream and strawberries on it, and you have a dessert. Um, which is delicious, um, but I have had people complain when I tell them this is strawberry shortcake. They're like, that is a biscuit with strawberries and cream, Lauren. This is not strawberry shortcake. And I'm like, yes, it is. So, um, perhaps the next time we do a cooking stream, which we made biscuits, and I used my Texas-shaped biscuit cutter. <laughs> um... Uh, we, we, in that case, we, I made gravy so we can have savory biscuits and gravy, but you can totally take biscuits and have biscuits and gravy and then have strawberry shortcake and you just, it's sufficient and good. No, because you, you, you put it, you, you open it up and you put, you plop whipped cream on it and then you put strawberries on that, which is what strawberry shortcake is. Um. Also, scones, yeah, scones, I guess they're crumbly. So when I make scones and when I make biscuits, there's similarities in the texture, but that's, I think, because my scones are not the most authentic. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, angel food cake is not something that I would I would want to serve plain, I don't think. I think it's, it's, it's a... Now, pound cake, on the other hand. Do you know why pound cake is called pound cake? You probably do. But it's because it originally, traditionally contains a pound of sugar, a pound of flour, I think a pound of butter, a pound of eggs. It's a very dense cake. I love it. Um, oh no, it's fine blood of the guts because actually scones and biscuits, American biscuits, are similar enough that I would, I would guess that American biscuits evolved from, I mean, it's clearly either scones or Irish soda bread. Um, and, uh, I mean, I guess I'm, it's kind of like halfway between the two. So it's interesting. Pound cake is absolutely delicious and I love it. Um, anyway, I really like baking. Sometimes I do baking streams. Um, I'm, I'm starting to do more of my variety of streams again. Um, so yeah, it would make sense. Uh, Nuj, it would make sense for Southern biscuits to come from scones. Um, but the I feel like some of the like techniques are very similar to soda bread. So I when I make them, because I'm American, <laughs> um, I, I I I use the same the same techniques to make all three of those dessert not desserts all all three of those baked goods I guess because soda bread's not a dessert. Um, well, okay, so Thai. Here's the thing I've done. Um, I've done um, streams where I give people the recipe and the shopping list in advance and then we all cook together and I kind of talk you through things. So we could do a communal baking day in that regard. You would still have to do the baking. I will not reach through your screen and present you with cake. Um, but we could do that. I would be excited. I would have to actually follow a recipe though. 
<laughs> no chaos baking for me. Oh, the worst. I like to bake without recipes for better or for worse. Um, I will say Japanese food is ridiculously good. Like when I was over when I was over for for a few weeks there, and I, I ate a lot of I ate a lot of Seven Eleven food, and like convenience store food is better than restaurant food in the U.S. It's amazing. I have very on very rare occasions come across things that were too salty for me. Like I had a friend who made um, Italian dish carbonara. I think that's Italian. Um, and he knew that I like salty food, so he salted it to his taste. And I was like, wow, somebody in the world like thing, likes things saltier than I can handle. Amazing. Um, I could make a cake for a video game character. Um, and yes, uh, the, the French do make very good desserts. <laughs> Someday I will be brave enough to make shoe pastry. <laughs> but today is not that day. Shoe pastry is. Because you cook it and you just... It's, the steps is complicated and intimidating, and I've only recently mastered pie crust reliably. So, which, by the way, if you want to make pie crust, making American biscuits is a very good partway step. Not snail pie, although I have made a butterscotch cinnamon pie. Um. Oh, man. But butter is so good. Do you just brown the butter for a little extra flavor? Welcome to my streaming, where we'll just start talking about baking for 10 minutes at a time, and then we'll start talking about stories and stuff too, which we haven't been doing this time around. Um, because we took a food departure. Let's see. Japanese convenience stores are very delicious. I think if I go back, I want to be not too scared to say the three phrases that I know how to say in Japanese. I want to try to have learned more, but I have a I have a, a panic reaction to speaking another language in front of people, which is something I'm currently in the process of working on. So I I had a very hard time with that in Japan. Oh, but I tried. I did try. The thing with shoe pastry is that it's very easy to mess it up. And that's intimidating. We did go off on a tangent about the social implications of the lack of female-female of female pairings in this week in fandom. That's true. So so these are these are these are conversations. If you join if you join Lauren's streams, you will hear those things a lot. Um Ty, that is a good choice. That is a very, very good choice for, for chocolate chip cookies. So Blood of the Gods, I um I studied French for five years, four and a half, long enough that you would think I would know it, but I can't speak it at all. <laughs> so I can read sort of, understand if it's slow and can't really write it. So yeah. And the, just the differences between English and Japanese are so intimidating. Um, I've had various friends, including some of my Japanese friends, tell me that I should study Japanese. <laughs> it's scary <laughs> because it's it, there's so much that is so different. And I always think that I'm really bad. I always think I'm really bad at languages, but um, one of our community members on Discord has he 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 they what are Sirtaki's pronouns? Um I'll default to they. Um they are a linguist studying like 10 languages and they've convinced me um they've convinced me to try the the natural language or na natural learning or nature learning or something technique he him thank you chrono for checking um so uh so so he's he's convinced me to give that a try so i'm going to try to Get over my fear of language. Hey, I have said some words in French, and Ellie is French, so she can hear if I say it wrong. So that's actually really scary for me. In fact, if I were to say something in Japanese, <laughs> now that I know that there is a native speaker in Japanese, 
<laughs> that would also be very scary. <laughs> Thank you, Ellie. Um, I have... Yeah, see, that's what, that's what, that's what Sirtaki told me. Um, because I only ever, like, we only ever did French in school, classes, barely talking to people or anything. Um, and so what he says is the best way to learn things is, is to immerse yourself in something you enjoy. Talking to people, but like reading things or playing things, experiencing things. Um, because I, my dream, if I ever studied Japanese, would be this game in Japanese because the translation has problems. Um, and so one of the people who watches Arukimania, hello, I know you're watching this on YouTube if you made it this far. Um, so one of our regular viewers on YouTube works as a translator actually between the two languages um, and, uh, and will answer my questions like in YouTube comments if I ask questions as we're playing through this and I'm like, this doesn't make sense. What does it say in the original? This person will then go and do like a little bit of research, like watching Japanese playthroughs and then come back and explain it. Which is really interesting because apparently, um, because I've been playing this game since I was a kid, um, but apparently the thing that we were talking about earlier today, tonight, playing through this, um, is Shu and Apple, their relationship. Because they say in English, he, you know, he is like a, an older brother and she is like a little sister, but he comes across as so cold, so cold to her that I've always thought of Shu as being this like cold as ice person. Um, and so like finding out that apparently he speaks to her when, and it didn't get translated, but he speaks to her affectionately as an older brother to a younger sister has completely changed the way that I see Shu as a character in this game. Because my understanding of Shu as a character did not have room for him to be loving and affectionate to somebody like that. Um, and it's so much more interesting for him to be the cold calculating strategist that he is, but also to have this like, like, you know, really, really deep and meaningful love for another person that's way more interesting and, and far more true to what, um, what, what we can tell from Murayama's, like, observations of humanity and the way people interact. Um, because one of the things that I love about, about his writing is that there is so much nuance to the characters that a lot of games don't do. So for example, um, doing Futch and Humphrey's um, side quest and the, 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 the almost like delicate characterization of Futch and the, the complexity of his state of mind, whereas I feel a lot of games would have a character be like, oh, I'm sad because my dragon died, but now I'm excited that there's a new dragon. Um, but instead it's really complicated because he doesn't want to get his hopes up. He doesn't want to feel like he's betraying his previous dragon. Um, like, there's, there's all these like little pieces and, and then the, the, and obviously no spoilers because Chrono and Noel Girl haven't seen it, but the character of Joey alone is a very complex one. Um, and, and Luca is interesting. I would say that Luca is a lot less complex than the rest of the cast, but he is not just a flat villain. Um, which is nice. Like, I love Final Fantasy VI, arguably my favorite game of all time, but Kefka is not a nuanced or interesting character. Luca Blight is like what would happen if you took someone who was as crazy and destructive as Kefka and put him in the real world. Um, and he's a real person instead of like an over the top, you know, stage performance villain. Um, it's such good stuff. Such good stuff. Yes, and having complicated feelings about Joey is good. I think most people do. My sister just really doesn't like, um, my sister doesn't like Joey. And I'm like, but you don't, you don't like Joey as a person, but you should like him as a character, if that makes sense. Like, I mean, and you can like him as a person too, if you want to. But I think it's reasonable to be like, I hate that you keep doing this, but he's so interesting and well done and has, see, okay, I love, I love Kafka because Kafka fits the game that he's in. My regular viewers have heard me say this a lot, but Final Fantasy VI is this, like, 
over-the-top, dramatic, operatic performance. Like, it's just this... I love it to death, but it's this huge, larger-than-life melodrama. So Kafka fits perfectly in that story. Suikoden, all of the Suikoden games are so very human at their core. Um, like, I think they're amazing because, yes, there's, like, this stuff with the true runes going on and there is, like, you know, Harmonia going on, which we haven't gotten to yet for some of the people who are viewing this. Um, but, uh... If you take that stuff out, at the at the at the end of the day, Suikoden games are are about like human levels of conflict and and very mundane, ordinary problems. Like the things that happen in the Suikoden games, a lot of them could happen, like are even based on historical events. It's it's very real, very human problems, like like um Roud is a very, very human villain. You know, he's, 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 he's greedy and self-focused and doesn't care about other people, but in a very realistic and believable, plausible way. Um, and, uh, and so I think that that's, that's so cool. And there aren't many stories like this. There aren't many stories that are ordinary stories about ordinary people, but on a big scale. Like you'll have small stories that are about characters' emotions or about, like, a, a smaller conflict that, like, stay closer. Um, but you don't usually have a war story, in a JRPG at least, that is this human. And I absolutely love it. Um, see, Ty, I feel like the, the Final Fantasy VI cast tends to be more archetypal rather than fully fleshed out detailed individuals. And I say this as someone who loves that game very much. I say this as somebody who has written 90,000 words of a fanfic about that game and still going. <laughs> Do you like fanfiction? Read my fanfic, Darkness and Starlight. Um, <laughs> I have a lot of little self promo, right? Um, yes, so, so yes, yeah, so Raud has the injured, the, the, the blind sister that he's going to help. So he has that little bit of nuance. Um, that adds a little bit more complexity to him. Um, but he's also just petty. And you hate him in a petty way. It's like Craze in Suikoden 1. It's just a despicable character. But he's so painfully normal. You know? Like, he's like one of the worst characters in that game, and, and you've known people like him. You could run across him. Um, yes, Chrono dis Chrono's my beta reader, and he's like, this, Lauren, what you're doing here is you're trying to sweep it in and sweep out in if I Final Fantasy VI. So yeah. Um, but yeah, so I love this stuff. Um, I haven't played through Final Fantasy Tactics myself. I've kind of half watched other people in my life play it, but I've thought about playing the War of the Lions version because I hear the translation is better. Um, so I would like to, uh, I would like to maybe give that a, a chance. Um, I love, I love Six very much. And, uh, and part of that is because when I played it as a kid, I, I, if you see me like looking up, it's because I have two posters. Well, I have a poster and a cross stitch of Lock and Sillies that I, that I have up on my wall because I love them very much. Um, but, uh, when I was a kid and I played it, I was able to fill in the gaps, and they gave me very good pieces, and it was a whole package It comes together very well. Um, and so I like personally bonded with the characters, but if I were to talk about games that have the best story, like it's Suikoden 2 has some of the best writing, like, which is why I want to be able to play this game in the original language. I wish I could, I wish I could experience Murayama's words um, as they are. I want to know the, the details and the nuance. I want to know the, I mean, obviously this would be more than just learning, learning the language, but I want to know the cultural context behind the things that are happening. I want to know what we can interpret from the way a character talks. I love that there is that much coded into the language. Um, see, I'm okay with Shakespeare type language. And because I'm not attached 
two tactics I wouldn't mind losing iconic lines. I have a hard time with the retranslation of Final Fantasy VI because they changed the iconic lines. Even though the translation of Final Fantasy VI that we got when it was three, when it was on the Super Nintendo, it's terrible. Ted Woolsey is the most idiosyncratic translator I've ever encountered, um, for better and for worse. But I love it anyway. Um, Final Fantasy X is excellent, but I played that on stream for the first time a few years ago. I, I, I tried playing it back when it was new and did not get into it, but uh, I loved it so, so much. Yes, son of a Submariner, that is it exactly, Rain. I appreciate you and your taste in video games. <laughs> yeah, they changed it to son of a sandworm, which is nowhere near as good. God, such iconic lines. I've been told that Kafka is more of a generic evil clown in the original Japanese version of Final Fantasy VI, and he was way more interesting and weird in the translation, so I've been told that they now use the like American translation version of his personality, even in the Japanese, um, even in the, the, the Japanese writing for him now, which I think is great. Um, because he's a very interesting character. Uh, as a as a translator, uh, oh no, no, but Mercurius. Okay, I I am also a Ted Woolsey apologist. Okay, I love him very much. I love his. I'm forcing the friend that I'm playing six through, playing six with, right now. I'm I'm forcing her to play through the Ted Woolsey translation, and she's like, I want to have a running list of all of the ways that he tries. Because he, he wasn't allowed to use the word dead or death or die because Nintendo of America would not allow that. So he used all these amazing euphemisms constantly. It's incredible. Um. <laughs> all right, Lum, thank you for giving Rain a gift sub. <laughs> yeah, Final Fantasy X is great. It is, it is how I, I found a lot of my viewers. So we do actually play through video games, I promise. But we do also just sit and talk. I do more sitting and talking and tangents and stuff um, when I'm uh, when I'm playing fine, playing through Suikoden because I've already played through it before. So it's a lot more, even more chill and random than my streams usually are. He's wounded. That's one of them. Swoon. That wasn't him though. Swoon was whoever they had translating for. Who was like they were like maybe we should get an actual translator for six. Um. I. I think that's fine, and honestly, Ty, if somebody says that they don't find Kefka interesting, that's totally fine. Um, he, you can add more layers to him if you're like, okay, he, you know, was an adult who had the experiment of, of magic put into him and it drove him crazy or whatever. Like, you can read things into there if you want to, but I do, I do ramble about about things on games I haven't played before too, but they tend to be slightly more relevant. <laughs> Although this is relevant, I keep tying it back to this. Yes, Ty, there's a lot of things I wish they would have done. And if they did a remake of Final Fantasy VI, digging into the relationships between um, Selys and Kefka, Terra and Kefka, and Selys and Terra, like that needs to be developed more. So that's, um, but the difference is Kafka was a grown man when he received his magic infusion. Celis was a baby. And I think that made a big difference. I don't know if they ever addressed that, if there was like a, a novella or something like that, because there is some written content that, that provides more context than the games do the game itself does, but yeah. <sighs> I have feelings about that game. You you should read my story and see my interpretation where I give the character nuance. I don't know. No, I really like stories, though. And I really like both of these games. And I really want people to know and appreciate this Week in series. So I'm excited that Aiden has, 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 like, it was so phenomenally successful as a Kickstarter. It has gone beyond the Suikoden fandom, although it did make me realize that the Suikoden fandom, we are no longer the small group of weird kids sitting at the table while the giant pile of Final Fantasy VII fans, which I guess I finally have joined, um, are like occupying everything. I played some of eight and I stopped playing it partway through the second disc and played Suikoden 2 instead. Because I, I stopped playing Suikoden 2, I played through the beginning 
and the like we're murdering teenagers we're slaughtering children on screen in the opening section was a little more than i could handle in high school so i was like i'm gonna play final fantasy 8 instead and i was like man i just really don't care about these characters and my sister was like okay when i come home from christmas we are going to play so we couldn't do and you are going to like it and she was right um she also made me don't don't explain the context of this to anyone but she made me get the tinto ending and i was like i don't want to do this She's like, yeah, you do. So we're gonna do that. I'm not giving any of you guys the choice in the matter. We're gonna get the Tinto ending. Um. Oh, there you go. Argetlum has some of the, the context, the additional print stuff. I've known a few people who liked Eight um, and really like characters. I, including the girl that I'm playing Final Fantasy VI with right now, she really loves Eight. So she's made it made a case in its defense. My sister and I, are, I love her very, very much. We are very different people. So I don't generally link to her streams because the way that she talks about games and things like that, there's a lot of, there are some similarities, but it's like she'll use language on her stream that I'm not comfortable with. So, um, but she does, she does stream. She just plays point and click adventure games a lot. <laughs> Oh, uh, Parasite Eve. Man, I played Ferris Parasite Eve and I like barely played I I barely beat games back then, but I got to the final boss rush and my disc was scratched. So I went to go rent the game so I could have a new disc and then my save corrupted. So I never beat Parasite Eve, but I almost did. That game was very cool and scary, and I totally had nightmares about it. Like I said, I, I literally had nightmares from Parasite Eve. <laughs> I definitely did. Um, I feel like there's a there's a delay with chat here, which makes sense because I've dropped a lot of frames this stream. This has been a this has been a weird. I'm sorry. I feel like the stream has been all over the place, but I like to just hang out and talk to people. So, yeah. Man, the ending of Parasite Eve is weird and abstract. You know, there were a lot of weird games that came out then. Uh, Square was taking some risks, and doing weird and interesting things. Okay, yeah, let's see how, how did we do? How did we do against the people who made fried rice? <laughs> oh my God. We annihilated them. Like, we, 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 we. We squished them like a bug. Yes, Chrono. Wow. Yeah, the island salad. What even is island salad? I don't know. I feel like it. I feel like it must be something Hawaiian, but I don't know. But we destroyed them. We did a really good job. Good job. Yes, we dunked on them. But see, like a regular salad has fruit and nuts in it. Thousand Island dressing, maybe. Yes, if somebody on the internet can inform me, that is one thing that's 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 difficult, is that I don't know what the food is. If they didn't translate the name, and sometimes even if they did, I'm just like, I have no idea. And uh, yeah, wow, good job us, good job us. I mean, I know what okonomiyaki is. So there are some of them that I know. But then there'll be things like the spinach one. That I only know it's spinach because one of the options is spinach juice. And then somebody told me it was a, uh, it was a, uh, like basically like cooked greens, which I have a cultural context to understand. Island Paradise Salad.
Oh no! No, don't don't poison yourself, sir. Oh no, the drama! The drama. The levels of drama. We beat the brother and now this brother is having to uphold his honor. They were raised by the group. Well, you can just stay with us instead. We'll keep you safe. You can you can join my kitchen. But he ran away instead of dying, so that's something. Yes, Two River is amazing. I wanted, I've been meaning to do a cover of Currents, the vocal version of that, for a million years with a friend. So I should just do that. I, it's, it's one of the best songs on an amazing soundtrack. It's so good. My life is worth nothing. No! You should join us. I'm really not sure what happened here. Like, like, oh, and I found this. Like, it's not clear who is speaking or what they're talking about or what the context is. Here's Hayo referencing somebody, a name. Why must I still fight? It's like a, like some Mega Man X levels of drama happening here. Okay, so we, I was actually about to say something to that effect, Ellie. Um, so we try, that's one word that we know is not English. So we try grat. <laughs> People don't usually say gratin, which is what it looks like to me. Like if I were to read that as a word in English, I would say like, like gratin, but, but I know, I know to try to say. <laughs> Frenchish. <sighs> Two chefs and a nice info vault keeper. Yes. That was a good that was a good group of chefs. Is it gratin? Is that is that how people say it? Okay. It may just be it may just be that I run with a particular kind of nerdy food people or something, I don't know. Because we try to say, oh, you do say, sugar, snap, peas, mango, avocado, red onion, coconut, combination of bib and romaine lettuce with a dressing of honey, lime, and a neutral oil. I want that. I would eat that and I would be happy about it. Man, no wonder people give that high ratings. Delicious. Where is the soy sauce? Yes, that room will get a floor renovation, I think, once we get... Not Mina. What's her name in this game? I forgot. The worst. All right. I went the wrong way. We have to go consult. Oh my god, raw avocado is a perfect food. I miss avocado. Moving from Texas to Canada, let me tell you, it's a struggle. Uh, Are you ready? God, this is so good. At the live concert, this was so cool because this this was in an in an intermission after the intermission. The bassists all came out and then they all like started doing this. Well, I think I don't remember if somebody actually flipped a coin, but they did this and then everybody else kind of filed in and they were wearing sunglasses and they were doing the snaps. It was it was it was great. 
I don't know why more video game music bands don't cover this song. Like, and then there's a flute. So what needs to happen, clearly, is that the Super Soul Bros need to cover this and then get me to play the flute part. Obviously, right? Oh man. Poor Tuta, no one takes him seriously because he's a tiny baby child. Nobody asked you to be sassy about the kid, Richmond. All right, let's continue to dig up the dirt on this poor child. <laughs> it's made fun of by Richmond, how dare. Tuta is 11. He looks very young for his age though. Oh right, there's a big long delay because of the number of dropped frames I've had. So we're basically operating, operating in different times. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, he looks really, really young. It's a little bitty, tiny child. You pick him up and put him in your pocket. Give him a piece of cake. Look, there are cowboy characters who wear blue jeans in, I think, Suicode in 3. So, like, <laughs> we have an elevator. <laughs> Eras are irrelevant. Regions of the real world are irrelevant. It's Suikoden. They just put a little bit of whatever they want in. Well, I mean, if you look at the, yeah. If you look at the different kinds of characters that we encounter and the character designs alone, um, especially the ones that are outside of the main plot, thing but like the side characters like they're they just do whatever they want genre wise and who's gonna tell them no I guess the actual robot made from a barrel we could we could investigate the elevator guy if we wanted to an oil an oil fuel fueled engine so that would be a combustion engine right which is more advanced than a steam engine right this is not this is not my strength. I don't know if that counts as like technology or engineering or what, but it is a thing that is not the thing that I know. But yes, but there are guns, but they're magic guns. They are sentient magic guns because the Howling Voice Guild is cool and weird. Man. I started late tonight, so I guess we're going late. <laughs> also, we just got talking and I just really enjoy talking. Did I say a spoiler? It's true, there are squirrels the size of a small child. There's just, look, Suigoden has a level of incredible realism in a lot of ways, but not always. <laughs> oh, they don't, a, a null girl, I don't know that they tell you that in the game. Sorry, I think that that's, I think that's an additional content that is outside the scope of this game. Um, either that or that is something that was made up in the tabletop role-playing game that we had, because we definitely had Howling Voice Guild members in that game. And I, there, especially when we play Suikoden 3, I will get confused and think that things are canon that aren't. And, I, and if so if those of you who know Suikoden 3 hear me start talking about a thing and you're like, that's not the game, Lauren. It's because of the tabletop game that my ex played or ran for us a million years ago. Because it was... Marasobi was the name of the kingdom, that, or the, the country that we were in, but it was it was closer to the location of, like, it neighbored, like, Karaya and stuff like that, so. 
be, it may be meant to be inferred. It is entirely possible that in the past 20 something years, my brain filled in holes. <laughs> it does that, brains do that. I don't remember the explanation of Squeak in Three's elevator. But when I think of hilarity and technology in a Suikoden game, I think that Suikoden 3 is the game. So, I don't know. Okay, the Night Rune is awesome. He's so sassy. He and Victor are great. I'm so glad they can sass each other so much. Man, I love Suikoden. I love that I can talk about things that are ridiculous and silly in it. Um, and then like also talk about like there's just so much good serious content as well like just it's fantastic I love it very much I love it so much that I am replaying through it I mean I'm like I am playing through the game I am but also I'm just talking a lot <laughs> about things that I like I don't know that anybody... OT3, Flick, Torgun, so... Gone is... The dragon, oh, the star dragon sword. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't know if anybody actually ships Victor with a sword. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure that somebody has written fanfic of Victor and his sword. I believe in the power of the internet. Ty, I think the the ships in Suikoden 4 have something to do with runes too, but I don't know. Oh no, no, oh no, no, girl! <laughs> have we given you, have we given you, um, given you ideas? I was reading one of your fanfics. I haven't, I haven't finished it yet, but, uh, but I have it open in a tab, so. Yeah, man, I've been I've been thinking about writing another tiny, tiny Suikoden bit, um, but I haven't. Yes, you should poke at the Cleo and Pawn story. I would be interested in that. I love Pawn and all of his <sighs> idiocy. See, the thing is, Chrono, I don't actually have any investment in either of those characters. I don't, I would basically be making up two characters at that point, and I would rather write my own characters from scratch. Because Ulan and Anita don't have any actual definition for me in this game, and they have no relationship, so I would be completely starting from scratch. And I'd rather work up my own novel if I'm going to be doing that, as opposed to writing characters that I love already. Yeah, I have hit the point, I think, where I need to shut down soon because my brain is like forgetting that I'm streaming and it's just like, oh, I'm just hanging out talking to my friends and singing along with music like you do, which I mean really is not that different from streaming for me anyway. Let's be real. <laughs> I'm not wrong, am I? That's what we do here. I do play video games with gameplay more. It's not quite a record, no, that record is held by my my, my Undertale replay, but, um... <laughs> Wait, no, but Chrono, we have walked around in the game and talked to... talked to Richmond, so... Yeah. Thank you all so much for hanging out, and thank you to all of our new friends. I don't know if, if, if any of you are still here, if you've wandered off. Um, but if any of our friends who raid it stuck around, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the raids. Um, that's always exciting. I love meeting new people. Um, I'm looking forward to listening to the Suikoden podcast. That's a super cool thing to have exist. Um, and, uh, and for the regulars, thank you for, thank you for indulging me rambling as much as I do. This has been a particularly chatty stream and, and there's a lot of good story stuff happening that we're just not getting into. And so I do want to kind of share more of that. Um, but, uh. But, uh, but yeah, like, we'll just keep doing what we do. So just as a reminder to everybody, 
Um, tomorrow we're gonna dive into Stormblood. Um, Thursday is more Hades, and like I said, there's going to be um, a, a mini golf brain dump. So look forward to hearing what kind of weird shenanigans my brain has come up with. Um, Saturday we're gonna do an art stream, and then Mondays we are now doing creative sprints. So come on out and join us and get your day started or your week started right. Um, yeah, so that's everything I've got. Um, hopefully it'll be fun for everybody. Thank you so much for joining, for hanging out. Um, take care of yourselves. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a good evening. Bye!